Uh, I want to start with an announcement made by uh, the judge in uh, Charleston yesterday, mm -hmm. Judge Clifton Newman, um, reporting to the court what the jury had reached in the trial of former police officer Michael Slager, uh, who shot and killed Walter Scott as Walter Scott was running away from him unarmed. Here's the judge. See the note that says, we as a jury regret to inform the court that despite the best efforts of all members, we are unable to come to unanimous decision in the case of the state versus Michael Slager. So reportedly it was 11 to one. They needed 12, a hung jury. Uh, you know, Wes, we've seen a lot of videos lately. We've seen a lot mm -hmm. of examples of police officers shooting unarmed victims, particularly young black men. This is the worst of all. So this was the case. You have to think back to when this shooting kind of first happened. We, you know, put yourself back in 2015. We've just coming out of we've just come out of 2014. We've seen no indictment for the police officer who killed Eric Gardner in New York. No indictment for the officer who killed Michael Brown in Ferguson. Uh, no, uh, you've just seen the Tamir Rice shooting when eventually there'll be no indictment for that. But in each of those cases, there was some obfuscation or there was, you know, a lot of reasonable people said, well, that guy really deserved it or Eric Gardner shouldn't have resisted. Or, well, Tamir Rice was a kid, but he had a toy gun that looked real. This was that, uh, you know, you hate this terminology, but this was that perfect victim case, right? Yeah. Here you had this unarmed black man who was shown on video clearly running away, um, not even particularly running very quickly, not that that should have made a difference, right? But that this was and that type of case. the video was case. clear. There was no doubt what that video showed, right? No, yeah. no, you know, un unquestionably. And then there's the question also of, you know, that video also shows uh, the officer, Michael Slager, seemingly then placing his taser next to Michael, or, or next to Walter Scott's body, right? And so this was something that, you know, I remember when the, when this shooting happened, getting emails from literally people who had been online trolling me for for months, saying, you know, all these guys deserve it. What are you talking? Well, actually, this one's kind of crazy. What do yeah, you mean? Yeah, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that that really was a wake up call for a lot of people because there there is a faction of people who say, yeah, <clears throat> well, just do what a police officer tells you. You're not going to get in trouble if you get pulled over. You know, just follow the orders. Okay, and, and I hear that all the time. This is a guy. That was clearly fearing for his life and with good reason. Uh, well, of course. And so and if in the what I say to people, though, is like, all right, so if it can happen one time, if if you are a black, black man, a black woman and you watch it happen one time on video that in many ways validates your fears of all of the other yeah. times. Right. You know, that like, no, yeah. we have watched a, a black man get shot in the back running away. So what does that mean about all those other times where the story was that he was running away and shot in the back and the police said, oh, no, no, he wasn't. Well, wait a second, you know, and so I think that this case showed us kind of the power of video in many, uh, in, to many regards and to ch change people's minds and to change people's perceptions, but also now uh, with this judges, with these jury's verdict or lack of verdict, um, kind of speaks to some of the limitations of that video. What was Slager's defense? So Slager's defense, Slager's argument here was that, and again, uh, Walter Scott had been pulled over for a missing brake light. Yeah. Um, he had. Let's, it, it, let's, it, let's remember what the original. It, for, for an optional, was. for a missing third brake light. So it wasn't even one of his two primary ones. Mm -hmm. It was the one that sits in the, the back uh, windshield, which is not an actual, uh, you know. A, a, legal requirement. A, a legal, no, not in South Carolina, it does not. And so it was an optional traffic stop to begin with. Um, Walter Scott had some outstanding child support payments. He had previously, um, I think several years earlier, had to do a few nights in jail for the same reason. He's engaged, getting ready to get married, and doesn't want to go to jail for a few nights. Um, and so gets out of his car and runs away. Slager uh, catch, catches up to him. This is kind of in a uh, kind of empty lot, mm -hmm. a, little, mm -hmm. a little pulled off of a main street. And Slager catches up to him. They have some type of physical struggle. Um, it seems based on kind of both accounts, it seems that Slager pulled his taser and Scott pro possibly reached out to prevent himself from being tased, grabbed the taser away from the officer. And then the video starts. And we see at the beginning of this video, Walter Scott kind of tossed the taser back towards the officer, turn and run away. The officer's version here is that, you know, this man had taken his taser from him which horrified him. He thought he was about to get tased and in the heat of the moment pulled his gun and fired, um, perhaps not realizing how far away Walter <laughs> Scott had gotten. Um, he, his argument was that things were moving so quickly. This is someone who has run from me, who has grabbed my, one of my weapons, and so therefore I was fearful of what he would do, is the officer's feared argument. Feared for his life? That he so feared for his life is, is, that, is, his, is his turn of phrase. And what we know, based on the way our legal system works, is that if you can convince 
one person um, of a jury that you feared for your life as a police officer, it absolves you of essentially any anything you do. Doesn't that seem to be the rule that police officers can do whatever they want? And kill anybody they want and get away with it. Well, I, we we have a um, especially on duty, right? Because because there's a little bit of a distinction where you see officers sometimes being charged and convicted is when a police officer kills their wife in mm -hmm. the kitchen, okay. right? When right. The, you know, yeah. but but short of of that, right? On duty police officers uh, very very rarely face consequence. We we did a piece uh, in 2015 as part of our series on police force. Um, where we looked at 10 years of fatal police shootings on duty. And of what was probably about 10,000 fatal police shootings, we had 54 cases where an officer was even charged, and just a handful of those cases, uh, convictions. Most are mistrials, many are non -guil or not guilty verdicts. Uh, we have a system that is structured and set up to be extremely permissive of police officers. We have baked in a bias towards them into kind of how our system operates. Yeah. Uh, and in a sense, understandably, because mm -hmm. we do depend on them. And of course. When we get in trouble, we call a police officer, right? Yeah. And, and, and we're right. asking police to deal with things that we don't deal with every, you know, it's not the same as. And in many cases, they are putting their bodies on the line. We've seen <laughs> this lately, this rash of shootings of police of officers, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 around the country. But the other factor in this case down here that struck us when it first, when the jury was first seated so this is Charleston, South Carolina, Peter's in South Carolina. I remember, I remember this, talking to you guys when this when this yeah. case first started because Peter so, was giving me food recommendations. Yeah, that's, yeah right. That's my they, one, they, Charleston, that's my guess. I remember that now. That is my guess. <laughs> eleven a, a, a jury of twelve, eleven white men and women and one black man. In South Carolina. <laughs> Someone this might hardly suggest represent that. Yeah. not, the not re quite representative yeah. Yeah. of. I've seen more than one out of twelve black people in Charleston, South Carolina. I mean, they're they're down there. Yeah. They have a very rich community there. Uh, well, yes, no, it, it, it's it's a very robust <laughs> black community. Yeah. Charleston's. I mean, I, so, it's what forty or fifty percent. I mean, it's like yeah. A, 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 no. Yeah. yeah, almost so plurality of black people there. Yeah. We don't know who the holdout was, or do we? We, we don't know. Was it was not the, the so we know it was not the one black juror. We do not know who it was, but the the one black juror was the uh, um, was the foreman, and so and so he was the oh, one giving was, oh. these notes saying <laughs> we've got this one juror who's holding out. Can we get rid of this guy? <laughs> and, and so yeah. we know it wasn't the black got juror. It, yeah. it was one of the eleven white jurors. Yeah, but why would the defense even accept that juror? That's a, I mean, and that, that's an interesting question. This that that each of that this jury should have been challenged, and I've seen people advance this argument that that this there's no way this jury should have been sat in the first place with yeah. it being so yeah. disrepresentative. Uh, now that becomes difficult. It's this you know becomes this kind of political strategy in terms of. Every step of a prosecution, what, are you going for a murder? Are you going for manslaughter? Do you try to save your political capital with the judge for some, you know, motion or hearing during the trial versus striking the jury? You know, and so that gets into a little bit of, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking. But yeah. but beyond what the prosecution could or should have done here, we can all kind of say we understand that we're supposed to have a jury of our peers. It's supposed to be broadly representative of our society and, and populace at large, at least to the you know where they are locally. We know this is not the case here. And I would, one would hope, right, that anybody doesn't matter the color of their skin could look at that videotape and say, "Whoa, this was not a justified." Homicide. It's been fascinating. The, I mean, th again, this was one of the shootings that you had almost complete bipartisan consensus on. I, like I said, there yeah. are there are former cop bloggers who are literally the bloggers who write like every shooting. Like these are the 19 reasons why this guy deserved it. Who last night were like, this is crazy. They should have they should have <laughs> convicted this guy. The one of the first tweets I saw was from the head of the South Carolina GOP. Um, and again, Re Republican Party apparatus hasn't always been the most sympathetic to these victims of police shootings. And he's like, this is an abdication of justice. This is crazy, yeah. right? right. Yeah. And so. There is. This is one of those cases. And that... I saw the governor, Nikki Haley, even said, mm -hmm. don't worry, we're going to try this case again and eventually we'll get justice in this case. Se seemed to say, right, we yeah. know how she was thinking. Well, well talk about uh, there will be a, a second trial. Yes. So the prosecutors have said they are going to try this case again. Um, it's unclear what exactly they might do differently. Slager's if... no longer on the force, right? He's... No, no. Yeah. So they so they immediately fired him when the, when the police received the – because, again, this was a bystander video. So they didn't even initially have it. Um, and then uh, this man, Fedenden Santana, who took the video with his cell phone, gave it to the police. And the moment the police, because initially, 
what was interesting, you got to go back and look at the very initial coverage, right? This was a shooting that happened over a weekend, a Friday or Saturday. And so the next day's paper was the story of this cop who had been viciously attacked and his taser ripped from him and mm -hmm. had to shoot to save his life. And the, the attorney's like, this is the kind of cop we all need. And then two days later, this video comes out mm. um, and everyone goes, oh, wait a second. Never mind. We take all those quotes back. That's yeah. not true. The yeah. um, immediately they fired this officer once they got the video. Yeah. Uh, Wes Lowry is here. The book is They Can't Kill Us All. We started on one tragic example.